Welcome to Digital Debates. In the United States of America, we have the freedom of speech and the freedom of expression, and we are about to express ourselves in the form of debate. Today, it's a classic, Family Guy or South Park. We're going to find out finally, once and for all, which cartoon is America's favorite. Well, Dr. B, uh, it's me, it's me, it's that honor of the B to the V, Richard Bronson Vickery, marketer extraordinaire, CBO chief brand officer. And I got to tell you, though, coming into this one and really diving uh, just a little bit deeper into the family guy and, and really what that truly embodies, this is going to be the easiest sell I've ever had. My name is Matthew Schaffer. I am the host of the Most Lives on the West Coast, your boy, MSG. I host a podcast called Suck My Balls. It's a South Park review each and every week. I analyze and break down South Park episodes from beginning to end. So I'll let the uh, South Park work do all the talking for me today here, Dr. Ted. Before we get into it, don't forget that Digital Debates is brought to you by our wonderful sponsors. Once again, to our wonderful sponsors, we could not do digital debates without them. Prior to the debate, there was a coin toss, and per the coin toss, Rick Vickery is going to defer and go second, so MSG will start off the debate. Each participant will be allotted two minutes to introduce their topic, two minutes to rebut their opponent, a Q&A round with one-minute answers, and then finally, two minutes to conclude their argument. Let's ring the bell. Let's get to it. Two minutes on the clock. Time will begin as soon as MSG begins speaking. South Park, an animated television series set forth between two comedy genius. Brought together in the bowels of a college basement that has rocked the very foundation of our cultural animation lives. Now, the argument may be made here today that Family Guy is a great animated show in terms of strides of it makes in production, designs, and hell, even musical numbers. Not gonna argue there. However, South Park is a better television show, in my view, because it's one of the only shows that says, yes, we're gonna go there. There's no limit if they wanna do a joke on terrorism, incest, celebrity, heck, even suicides. They'll do it. There's no filter. And while we may not always like the fact that the show has the guts to unbashedly call out modern culture, politics, and much more, and make fun of it in some cases, you know, even lightheartedly, we can appreciate and we can sometimes actively criticize. But above all else, the serious conversation of what the heck is wrong with this world comes set and forth by this motion that South Park creates. The conversation, the, the backlash, the tweets, the longevity, 23 seasons. My show has never been canceled, but you may say, well, that's just a great thing for Family Guy. No, that just shows how great it is itself. It's uncancelable. It continues to push cartoon satire in ways they have never been seen before, and they continue to stay on the, the, pre, on the bulb, of, on, the, on the hill, the crest that is the throne of animation. South Park is thy name, and I will be a, uh, a purveyor of South Park once more. And as this debate continues, I will continue to show you why South Park is king. And you can check my back. Thank you, MSG. We're now going to take it to Rick Vickery to introduce his initial arguments as to why he believes Family Guy is a superior show to South Park. Same as the previous round, time will begin as soon as Rick begins speaking. 
Well, I would like to uh, commend my colleague here, MSG, on a superb opening statement there. But, you know, it, it truly was a super Sunday, January 31st, 1999, when 2 million viewers were formally introduced to the often controversial, certainly outlandish, yet all-American family known as the Griffins. You know, for a better part of two decades, the Griffins in their crazy cast of cohorts there in Quahog, Rhode Island, they reminded fans time and time again that it's okay to kick back, to relax, and just be entertained. You know, and while we're laughing, while we're sitting in awe, along with all that entertainment, we make subtle and unconscious connections to a group of very dynamic characters. Now, a group of characters telling timeless classic stories. A group of characters who have grown, that we have grown alongside, we have matured with. You know, my hope today is that everyone will they'll see beyond some just freaking hilarious cutaways to understand now how Family Guy, it's not only touched society, but it's a very part of our, our own souls and beings. Thank you. Thank you, Rick Vickery, who interestingly has elected to not utilize his entire time as this concludes the introduction round. It is now time for the rebuttal round. Once again, each participant will have two minutes to rebut each side's introductory statements. So we turn our attention once again back to MSG and his defense of South Park being the superior show to Family Guy as he rebuts the initial statements to the contrary made by one Rick Vickery. Yeah, let's begin with strength of characters. That's where Rick Vickery wanted to talk about, the dynamics, the being able to connect with the character itself. Well, Mr. Vickery, I would have to say you made a faux pas right off the bat by giving me something that I can scoop up and deliver to you. Let's talk about, for example, Meg. You know, Meg itself, she's been on this character, this character of Family Guy for decades. You know, she's designed to be the family punching bag. And although Family Guy, as we know it, you know, has really done absolutely nothing about her. She's constantly abused. Whereas, let's look at the uh, flip side of South Park with Butters. Butters often uses the punching bag himself, yet we know in the ins and out of Butters itself. He's a three-dimensional character. You know, The majority of characters on South Park itself are three-dimensional. Family Guy is based on one character, one drunk deadbeat who can't get his penis up because it's too damn small. He's essentially an oversized Eric Cartman who lives in Boston. All right, so if you want in-depth characters, well, that's where South Park has the strength. Every character can have its own individual episode, and it's even proven they can turn nothing characters such as uh, Scott Malcolm, who has diabetes, he's got his own episode last year, and the PC Babies, and that's 23 seasons in. They made brand new characters out of nothing. Family Guy has nothing. It's just gags and, um, you know, slapstick comedy humor it's surface comedy if that's what you're into and you want to get drunk and watch family guy certainly i am not going to argue against that but if you want strong in-depth characters who are going to make you think about your life we're going to make you reflect on who you are as a person but also entertain you in a satire way and poke fun at society itself well that's what south park is going to give you rick so that's my argument on strength of characters Thank you, MSG, for your rebuttal and defense of South Park being superior to Family Guy. But now it is time once again to hear from the opposition, Rick Vickery, who will now give his rebuttal in defense of Family Guy being a superior show to South Park. You know, MSG, you make mention of, or you try to take a cheap shot there, of a cancellation. And yes, there is no denying that, that they were moved from Fox and sold off to Adult Swim, a pivot of the Cartoon Network. And you make it as if so, that is really some kind of fault of the product itself or its creators. But really, that is more turmoil and a lack of direction within Fox itself. I think more that it speaks to of what Family Guy has done long, you know, when it comes to the longevity and how it has helped elevate both of those brands, especially a major big time, big league network like Fox, where they have steadily maintained their popularity and strength amongst all of their incredible programming. Now, on the point of characters here, you're all right. There is a diverse world within South Park, but they all seem to be one dimensional with very little growth from their introduction. This very day, outside of very early on in the series, we still have the pretty much the exact same Eric Cartman. 
Or on the other hand, you mentioned Meg, so I will point to Meg here. You talk about a girl who, who absolutely embodies that struggling, that lost, confused girl that in most cases, you know, would be very suicidal, that would want to lash out the side, but we see Meg persevere. We see her work through these hardships, even when it seems her own family has completely abandoned her, she still thrives to be the best possible being that she actually can be. It is those subconscious and those subtle messages that the characters in Family Guy will deliver with you. You see it across the board, even inside, as you call it, you know, the, the mainstay, the sole focal point, which is not true in Peter. You see him learn and evolve as a father. And believe me, the complete dynamic that you get with someone like Stewie Griffin, who alien sides himself stands out is the ultimate character amongst both of these shows as he represents that confusion between adolescence and adulthood when you think you know everything but you don't have a clue and those are ultimately confusing it is family guide indeed who doesn't need to be so brash and forward and beat you over the head with it but they can let you and just enjoy the show but grow with their characters Thank you once again, Rick Vickery, as we conclude the rebuttal round and now enter the question and answer round. Both participants will alternate taking the opportunity to answer questions which are unknown to the participants, at which time they will have one minute to answer the question. The round will conclude when the participants get the opportunity to ask each other a single question at the end of the round. We're going to kick off the first question to MSG in his defense of South Park. MSG, how would you respond to critical claims that South Park character Randy Marsh is now being utilized as a main character on the show, in part because South Park creators have ran out of ideas? One critic has gone on to say that the South Park writers acknowledged this themselves through Randy Marsh on a recent episode where he broke the fourth wall to comment on the unpopularity of the current season's Tegrity Farm storyline. With the writers seemingly acknowledging the show's unpopularity and lack of creative ideas, how can you propose South Park to be the superior show to Family Guy? Well, my criticism to that would be to Ted is, well, those individuals are not understanding the evolution of South Park itself. South Park being the satire, in-your-face, crude fart jokes at the beginning of its inception more or less evolved over the years into storyline-driven arcs that undertones and messages ultimately have a payoff, if you will, that have a climax, have an understanding where the kids learn to grow something. So in this particular instance, Randy Marsh had to eventually be evolved, not necessarily because they ran out of ideas. It's just Randy became a fan favorite. The creators understand, they recognize that through Randy's evolution over the years, he has been able to become a main stable. So why not give Randy finally his due? It was finally time. And they did a great job with Tigger. And Randy himself being able to break down the fourth wall only shows that Matt Stone and Trey Parker are listening to their fans and they wanted to recognize that they listened to everyone. Thank you for your answer, MSG, as we turn our attention now back to Rick Vickery. Rick, one of the gold standard websites for critical TV and movie reviews is Rotten Tomatoes, as it aggregates reviews from professional critics. When comparing the number of critics who took the time to professionally review both South Park and Family Guy, it shows that far more professional critics were willing to sit down to watch and review South Park episodes as opposed to Family Guy. So, Rick Vickery, if Family Guy is truly the superior show to South Park as you claim it to be, then why aren't more professional critics willing to sit down to watch the show? I think, you know, when we look at the environment of what was Rotten Tomatoes is represented by, it is an elitist group. And that is your, your traditional South Park fan base. If they do want to seek out those venues to share their thoughts upon this, because it, it is credit there. You know, they, they do want to drive that reaction, where in turn, is in my opening statements, one of the points I really wanted to stress here with Family Guy Hones Home is that it is okay to sit back, relax, kind of just let yourself go inside of that moment. It's okay to, to laugh, to live, to love, whatever that might be. And then it sets to that subconscious. And then you actually take that out into the real world. You can take that out, not into the world, you know, the internet make believe where you have all these different reactions to something along those lines. You carry what you gather from Family Guy with you. And that is why classic storytelling beats out this propaganda-ish strategies from South Park. 
Thank you, Rick Vickery, for your answer as we turn our attention back to MSG. MSG, when comparing viewership numbers between Family Guy and South Park, it shows that for the last three seasons, Family Guy averages over 3 million viewers per episode, whereas South Park's highest viewership over the last three seasons was three years ago in 2017 with 1.68 million viewers as their peak for a single episode. South Park only cracked 1 million viewers once the following season and has not seen over a million views for any individual episode since that time. So MSG, if South Park is truly the superior show of the family guy, then how come not as many people are watching? Well, I mean, I can definitely understand from a television statistical standpoint that Family Guy, as Rick mentioned, is on a larger network, that being the Fox network, which is in everyone's home if you want it to be. So Family Guy has the ability to operate in people's homes even if they don't want it there. Whereas South Park is on now more of a limited network, that being Comedy Central. There are other alternate methods that do, of course, come into play, which I don't have the numbers on here, so I'm not going to make that argument itself right now that they have higher or lower numbers. But there are a lot of online users. There are a lot of individuals who are illegally torrenting and downloading the show in three different ways. I myself do it for certain band episodes about Muslim and terrorism. So and from an overall standpoint, South Park, though, continues to capture that social media audience where ultimately right now we as a society dictate what we like and dislike based on fear of missing out. So what's being talked about? South Park. Thanks again, MSG, as we have one final question to ask Rick Vickery before each of the participants will have an opportunity to ask a question of one another. And that question is this. Family Guy has faced a lot of criticism over the years for essentially being a ripoff of The Simpsons. One piece of evidence can be found in season 14 when one of Family Guy's main characters, Peter Griffin, admits to how much Family Guy has stolen from The Simpsons over the years. So if Family Guy is truly a better show compared to South Park, then why did they blatantly rip off other cartoon shows? In beginning to answer here, we can actually look over across the table here at our friend MSG and South Park, who would them, they self, in an episode that they produced, realize Simpsons did it. And even inside there, they point out that everything that's kind of been played out has been done before. So where people want to say that they're stealing from, pirating for something from the Simpsons, that's not the case. When you look for any successful individual out there, they imitate other forms of greatness. And it's just not the Simpsons that they sample from. It's from other cartoon strips. It's from uh, other 80s sitcoms, it goes all the way back to the love, the passion for this production in, in creating the cartoons here that, that they have put together all the way back to Timely Radio that's inspired this, to big band music, to Broadway productions. All of that comes into play when you're looking at what has gone into the creation. What is the ingredients that has made such a successful dish out of Family Guy? And thank you once again, Rick Vickery. It is now time for the final question with you two gentlemen now having the opportunity to ask one another a single question. Rick, as you answered the previous question, MSG will have the opportunity to answer first, and as such, you are up first to ask your question. MSG, you talk, you want to overemphasize how modern they are and how they push their buttons with what is the current events in society. Uh, I also ultimately want to ask you, you know, with so much praise that you're giving here, you yourself have to see these negative effects that it implies to if it is different. And just because they attack everyone doesn't make it right. I mean, what does overall this is when, you know, just recently they're completely mocking school shootings, a very, very serious issue inside of our society. Instead of actually talking about solutions, they have people turning the cheek at this. MSG, how do you defend these negative connotations that we are getting across our entire society from South Park? Well, I'll start by saying, A, fuck them. Look, we live in a society right now where everyone is on pins and needles and they don't want to have conversations and discussions. South Park is willing to push the boundaries of your mind and the thought itself. You're not willing to go out right now and have a face-to-face -face conversation with J Joe, Nancy Brown, whoever it is. South Park's going to put it in your face. Say, here's what's going on in the real world. You don't like it, fucking deal with it. So... That's my rebuttal to you on that regard as far as the defense itself on why they do, why they continue to push the boundaries, okay? They continue to create stories that make you talk about it, that get the reactions, that have long-lasting 
oppressions to the point where mothers against South Park groups are created, where people are actively seeking to get South Park off the air because South Park has transcended generations over the last decades to implement itself as the one show itself that's not willing to say no, is willing to say yes, and at the end says, say my bad. Thank you, MSG, for your answer, but now it is your turn to ask the question to one Rick Vickery to challenge his belief that Family Guy is a superior show to South Park. MSG, your question. Yeah, I was actually gonna serve it up easy. I wanna be nice here. Rick, tell me your favorite episode of Family Guy. What was the, the, the underlining tone of it? And what was the overall impression it had on you as a person? Very, very good question. I actually hope that this was going to be actually lobbed at me. So I appreciate the effort there. Uh, this is actually a multi-part. As I talk about that tremendous character development and especially inside of Stewie, where we do see that struggle between an adolescent dealing with that moving into adult and dealing with all of the issues that kind of come full center here. And this is the episodes where we see the passing of Brian, where he is killed in a tragic car accident. And you kind of see the family beginning to try to move away from that. Uh, but all the struggles and tribulations that Stewie has to go through to kind of cope with the new family pet, making that connection. And then even, in his own way, if he could warp time, if he could go back and change different things to prevent that, to bring Brian back in his life, the, the extreme lengths that he would go to. You know, inside of that, I mean, you have all the comedy included that, that lets you with the cutaways there, but that ultimate message that they hammer home, you know, it, it truly is of a, a telling of letting one part of your life go, moving to another, but never truly being able to fully cope with outside of that. Rick, you came very close to having the mute button hit on you as you did go over time there, but you did manage to finish your point just in time. And as we move toward the final round of the debate, each participant will have two minutes to conclude their final thoughts of the debate and take their last opportunity to sway the audience to their side. MSG is up first to give his final conclusion as to why South Park is a superior show to Family Guy. Let's start with uh, some of those gags. You know, Family Guy just... Ultimately, at the end of the day, the, the core point of its show is dumb gags. They have nothing to do with the plot or the story. South Park on the other hand is clever. Everything makes sense. It doesn't use cheap jokes. Now, despite South Park being in a pro show, just like Family Guy, the characters from South Park have more depth and personality. Unlike the characters, personalities from Family Guys are more negative and have limited redeeming qualities to them. Family Guy's jokes go on for painfully long at, at certain times. You know, men grunting with newspapers for three minutes long. Really? That's how much time you need to try and get over a, ah, joke? No, they didn't land. Move on. I'm in pain as well watching this. You know, South Park has things that anybody who isn't completely uptight can laugh at. Because even though the show makes fun of everything, the jokes relate to real life and tend to have messages. Family Guy has things that can be considered comical, but there's no actual structure or basis to the jokes in the show itself. Just random stuff to get a laugh or two. Now, the whole show hinges, of course, like I said, on one or two characters in Family Guy, whereas South Park has proven time and time again, year after year, that they can create a story and personality to any character they feel need fit. The list goes on and on when it regards to South Park. The actual plot it has, the stronger characters, you, let's look at even a breakdown of, let's say, a Cartman versus Stewie. Cartman and Stewie immediately have long similarities, both crave world domination, but are sexually confused. They're both hilarious. Again, Stewie's character alters a lot of time based on what's considered funny, whereas Cartman will just always be Cartman. He doesn't need to relive anything. Stewie constantly tries to make himself into something he's not because he can't accept who he is, because he can't accept the fact that he'll never be as great as Cartman. South Park has a stronger message. I hope I delivered a stronger message to you. The family guy can shut out. Take my bath. Thank you, MSG, for your final words. Although, as a married man, I must respectfully decline the offer that you concluded with, but we can now turn our attention back to Rick Vickery one final time as he offers his last argument as to why Family Guy is a superior show to South Park. Well, throughout this great debate, one of the confusions that's been a consistent with MSG is when it comes to character development, and he talks about how widespread it is. Uh, I, you know, I really want to set define the difference between inclusion and, and opposed to evolution. Just because you're adding more people doesn't mean you're adding complexity or layers to your storytelling. 
And as most people that attack Family Guy, they, they quickly point to the cutaway gags. No, in reality, those are just side devices as an acknowledgement. As we're talking about sampling greatness from classic cartooning to comic strip days. That's what those are there for. You know, a lot of people don't know Family Guy originally was intended to be a part of mad television. So we would have had those quick storylines throughout their programming. But ultimately, when you get down to each and every program, season, story arc, whatever it might be, you have classic in any era of time that can tell traditional down to or earth stories that relate to individuals. You have multi-layered characters that are relatable to everyday individuals outside of simply pushing a political agenda of two actually, sorry you know, to put out here, two very bitter and uh, lashing outward at society creators of South Park. Uh, now, I would say, I, I would like to thank both of you gentlemen for this tremendous opportunity to my colleague, MSG. I can only, I probably only begin to understand the extreme pressures that you must be, you must be under entering this debate forum. I mean, you have South Park embedded in you, your co-creator, co-host of the Suck My Balls podcast. I mean, going into sync, you have everything to defend, everything to lose here. I mean, you had to be as nervous as a sexually deprived Mr. Garrison returning home to Arkansas to see his father for the first time in 23 years, simply looking to have it handed to you. In my closing here, I just want to <laughs> quote the words of a generally great man. You're done. Sorry, time's up. <laughs> Thanks for joining the debate, though. Wow. Rick Vickery gets cut off by the time as we conclude our debate here today. But was it enough to convince you? It's now time to take the vote to the people. We want you to go right now to the Hameen Media Group Twitter page, and we want you to vote. Who gave the better debate? Who made the best argument? Did MSG convince you that South Park should be the better show, or did Rick Vickery convince you was his argument better about Family Guy being the better show? Go to Twitter right now, vote for your favorite, and we look forward to seeing you at the next digital 